Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to install the bed lift kit on this TX John Deere Gator. So if you'll stick with me here, we'll get started. Let's start by going over the parts that we're going to have in this kit and then also the main tool that we're going to need for this kit. So within this attachment, we are going to have for the TX a bracket that we're going to have to install to the underside of the bed that will pin to our actuator. So we have our actuator here that has our wiring harness where we'll get the power and the plug to our switch. Now we also have two pins here. This one is gonna be for the top of the actuator that goes into the bracket. And then we'll have our lower pin here that, there, that there's already a bracket made onto the frame where this one will fit. Then we're gonna have four of these self-tapping screws here that we're gonna to use to mount that bracket onto the underside of the bed. We'll have two bushings that are gonna slide onto this pin here for our bracket. Then we're gonna have two washers two clips, two zip ties, one safety label, and then also our instruction manual that we see here. Now, the main tool that we're gonna need for this install is going to be an impact driver here. We've got this impact driver with our 10 millimeter socket to make it easier to take these bolts and drive them into the frame when we're installing that bracket. So first thing we'll do here, guys, is get underneath the machine, underneath the bed. Go ahead and raise that up and start to install this top bracket. We'll go ahead and do this bracket install just to get the hard part out of the way first. So first thing that you're going to need to do is make sure and get your bracket going in the right direction. We need this part, these two holes here. This is where our actuator is going to hook onto. We need it closest to the bottom. So we're gonna start here by lining this up. Now you'll see here on the frame, you'll have a series of holes here. You're just gonna wanna make sure that your furthest tab out to the edge of the machine is lined up with the furthest hole there. And then everything else should line up into place. Now the next thing is going to be getting out one of your self-tapping screws here and getting that impact driver. All right, and then once we've got one in there, that's going to make the rest of these a whole lot easier. So just go ahead and start putting in the rest of those bolts. All right, now once that's done, we'll go ahead and move to the front of the machine and do the install of the switch as we need that installed before we put on our actuator so we can run that actuator out to go ahead and meet up with our bracket. Installing the switch here, not a hard process at all. One thing we are gonna have to do is remove our hood. So just remember that here in front of the machine, you just simply need to pull on the bottom right underneath your lights to get that hood released from the tabs there. And then you just simply remove that. And what you're doing there is just exposing the whole back side of your dash to where you can find the wiring that you need for this switch. Now, what you'll see here is one switch here that is actually gonna have, probably gonna have a little bit of tape on it from the factory. We just wanna go ahead and break that loose. And what your switch will look, what the plug for your switch will look like is this right here. And then you'll see that our tabs on our switch will match up with the terminals that are on this plug. Now, where we're gonna go with this will be to this one right here. So to remove that pop out, you'll just reach behind, push that out, push those tabs down to relieve that. Then we'll take our plug and go up to the hole there. Take our switch and make sure that it is the right way up and down. Match up our tabs with our plug here and then just start to work that switch down onto that plug and then down into the machine, making sure that our plug is fit snug and firmly onto the backside of our switch. Now from here, we'll just go ahead and go back on with our hood as we're done with the underside of the dash. Get that lined into place there and get everything lined up down below here and then just pop it back into place. So our next step is going to be getting our actuator mounted to the machine. And what we're looking for here is getting this mounted to the pre-made tabs here on the frame. You'll see them right here on this back cross member. And what we're going to do is be putting the bottom end or the end that comes right out of the base into that slot and then pinning it with our shorter pin here. So we'll go ahead and take that now, get that slid down into place there. Get 
All right, then once we've got that through, we need to go on the back side here with our washer. Just like that. And then on with our pin, just like that. Now, once we have everything in place there, we can see now that we're gonna have to go ahead and hook up our wiring. Once again, very simple. The plugs are going to be right here up on the frame. We have two that we're gonna go into. Now, one of these is gonna be your power, which is your red and black. And then one is going to be the piece that goes to your switch. So we'll take our wiring harness here. We'll go ahead and get these connected. Getting our power there and then our switch connection. You're just gonna wanna make sure that when you're putting these in, get them fully seated to where they clip into place. So we make sure and have that good connection. Now, one other thing that'll come in handy here is you're gonna need to get this actuator up to where we can put, where we can raise this up so we can make that connection. So if you can get yourself a tool here, maybe a hammer, maybe you've got a flat piece of metal, something that can go in between your actuator and something on the machine here to hold that in place. We need this to stay up so we can raise up on that, on our switch up front to raise this out and up to where we can make this connection without having to pull the bed down too much. So now that we've got that stuck in place, we'll go up, turn on the switch, start to raise our actuator out so we can pin it here at the top. Now what you're looking for is getting to this bottom hole so you just want to be pretty close. If you need to pull down on the bed a little bit to get it pinned, you can do that. But doing this one person, it's a lot easier if you can get that as close to lined up as possible by using your switch. All right, so then we'll go ahead and check it. Should be pretty close there. All right, so we've got it to where we can get it pinned. So now this is where we need to go on with our bushings. So we'll kind of have that pin just hang out there, set on our first bushing, go through our actuator rod, take our second bushing here, and go through all the way to the back side of the frame there. Then we can take our smaller washer here, go on with it, and then pin it in place right there. Now, you may think from here that we're done, but we still need to do a couple of things. Now we'll jump over to the other side and show you how to take off the lift assist and the locking mechanism that helps hold this bed in place when we don't have our electric bed lift on. If we don't have the electric bed lift kit installed, the things that helps us to dump this bed is going to be this gas shock here, this rod here, and then to hold the bed in place, we have a pin right here that connects to our latch. So we need to make sure and first of all, remove this pin. We just have a spring pin here that we need to get pulled out. And then just simply remove the pin and the bushing just like that. Next, we'll need to remove this gas cylinder here. Now you can use a flat headed screwdriver or a pocket knife, either one. But first of all, you have to remove these clips at the top of the cylinder and be careful as they are springy but once you have those removed just like that and same thing here at the bottom just like that now we can pop off our shock here you may also want to use that knife or screwdriver there to pry just be careful and just like that guys you get that removed Get that out of your way. And then last thing here is we need to make sure and get this rod removed as there is a locking mechanism down in this frame where if we go too high, this rod could drop and then lock us into place, causing us to have failure there at our raise and lower. So right here at the back, we have a locking collar here on this silver rod. We're going to need to get these tabs bent down out of the way all the way around so we can take 
that off. We'll just take that knife in there, work those tabs loose all the way around. And then once we have most of the pressure off of there, just take that guy loose as you're not going to need it anymore. Now, lastly, to get this rod removed, we're going to need to lower the bed a little bit here just to relieve some of that pressure so we can get that back side loose. So we'll go ahead and lower that down just like that. And then you may need just a little bit of force there to get that loose just like that. And we can simply take that rod out and now we have everything removed from underneath to where our raise and lower mechanism can work independently. So now we can go all the way down. We're all the way back up. All right, guys, so that's it. I hope after watching this, you've got the confidence to know that this is a job that you can do. Putting on one of these kits sometimes can be one of the most beneficial attachments that we can add to these gators. Like I said, especially if we have that physical limitation or if we're gonna be moving a lot of material that we're gonna need that extra assist to do that dump, this is a great attachment to have. So in saying that, guys, if this is something that you feel like you need, I'm gonna put a link in the description below where you can go to get this today part number BM23734. And also guys, while you're in there checking that out, if you have any other lawnmower, small tractor, or gator needs parts wise, make sure to check around in that site, look and see what else maybe you need for your property. And also guys, after watching this video, if you think that I've left anything out, you have any other questions or comments or concerns even, make sure to leave those in the comments section below so I can be sure to get back with you. And also guys, if you like this video, if this helped you out, out. If this is something that you've been looking to do and we helped you out today, we just ask you to please hit that like button and also give us a subscribe as that helps us out as well. And also guys, as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to go buy your parts right here and subscribe right here.